Today on the Ask BP podcast, we're talking about how do you manage to invest in real estate when you're working a full time job? Stay tuned. You're listening to another Bigger Pockets Ask BP podcast, where you'll hear short, direct answers to your biggest real estate questions. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets forums by using hashtag AskBP. And don't forget to pick up your copy of The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing and other great content when you sign up for your free account at biggerpockets.com. With that, let's get to the show. Hey, what is going on, everyone? My name is Brandon, and you are listening to the Ask BP podcast. It's part of the Bigger Pocket social network. Thank you so much for joining me today because we're talking about investing with a full time job. Is it possible? Let's find out. Today's question comes to us from Dave from Cebu, and Dave asks Hey, Brandon, how do you manage to invest in real estate while still working a full time job? Well, Dave, let me tell you about that. So, I do have a full time job, and not a lot of people know that. Actually, what I'm doing right now. I get paid for making videos and, and podcasts and all that on BP. So I spend most of my days doing a lot of stuff here on BP and I still invest in real estate on the side. Uh, and so I went from full-time real estate investor to uh, having my wife quit her job so she could handle a lot of the real estate activities and I could take care of bigger pockets a lot better. So that's kind of my story uh, and I still manage to buy property. I'm still rehabbing a project right now. I buy several properties every year. And I do it while working, I mean, I probably spend 60, 70 hours a week working uh, on my J-O-B. And so how do I manage to do that? Let me talk about a few things. First of all, I already mentioned one, my wife. Uh, being able to have a spouse that's supportive to be able to help out is fantastic. My wife is really, really good at managing tenants. And so all of our rental properties now, she can take care of them and look after a lot of the issues. So she does a lot of the bookkeeping and the you know looking for new contractors if we need to. A lot of that stuff she takes off my shoulders. Uh, then also we hired an individual. Uh, my mother-in-law actually does a lot of the answering phone calls, showing units, things like that. Um, and so that's a huge relief. And then finally, uh, you know, we have a lot of outside contractors do things like, you know, to do the repairs. I don't do the repairs anymore. We have people to do that. We have plumbers, we have electricians, we have carpenters. Uh, we've got even people to serve notices. We've got people to clean up. We've got all sorts of people that do the jobs. And so uh, that's first thing is having the right people uh, to be able to help you if you're going to work a full-time job. Secondly, uh, I think it's really important to treat your business like a business because that is what real estate is. So when you treat your business like you know you're you don't have a lot of time to run it, like you need systems and processes and all that, just like a guy who owns a McDonald's down the street, they run a business. Uh, they're not sitting there flipping burgers, they're running a business, right? So the same thing is true for you. You shouldn't be out there, if you're working a full-time job, you probably can't be out there doing every aspect of your business, but you gotta treat it like a business. And that's not just by, I don't just mean having employees. I'm talking about uh, having systems that, that deal with everything that you're going to go through. You know, so for example, uh, if you don't have a system for how you move in new tenants, every time it's just a brand new thing, you're just kind of making it up on the spot. You know, it's, it's hard. You have to be involved all the time. But when you have a documented system that somebody else can follow or that you can follow to quickly make sure you're not wasting time, uh, that is how you are more efficient. And then finally, really understand that if you have a full-time job, you're probably working 40 hours a week, maybe 50, right? Uh, in addition to that, you're probably sleeping, let's say 50, 60 hours a week. So you got 100 hours there. And, you know, add on another 20, we'll say, for eating and, you know, bathing and stuff like that. It was about 120-ish hours right around there. There's 168 hours in a week. So you've got 48 hours there, more than your entire day job, of extra time that you think you don't have. Uh, but you do. Uh, it's just a matter of how you spend your time that matters. And I know we've got family and you probably have kids. And there's a lot of things that vying for your attention. But you know, so does Netflix and so does the movie theater and all these other fun activities that we want to do as well. Uh, something has to be sacrificed somewhere. And so for me, I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, extracurricular activities because I focus a lot on building my real estate business in the nights and weekends and I focus a lot on being the best person I can at my job during the day. So I want to encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, if you're looking to become better at that and maybe quit your job, uh, that is definitely something you can do. I don't recommend doing it like today unless you've got some kind of cushion to be able to handle it. But you could use real estate to get out of your job if that is something that you're looking to do. So keep that in mind as well. 
so pretty much that's what I got for you today on how to manage you know, all your properties or being a real estate investor despite working a full-time job. You gotta rely on people, you gotta treat it like a business, and uh, you just gotta be able to maximize your time and be as efficient as possible. So with that, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, today's success quote comes from good old Abe Lincoln. And Abe Lincoln said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So with that, let's get out of here. Remember, in pursuit of your dreams and your goals with your real estate ambitions, don't just learn, but what? Take action. For the Ask BP Podcast, this is Brandon signing off. You've just heard another episode of the Bigger Pockets Ask BP Podcast. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets Forum by using hashtag AskBP. And for more incredible real estate investing tools and education, including a free download of our book, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing, head over to biggerpockets.com and sign up for your free account today. We'll see you on the next show.